Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is part five of our uh, T3485 and 135th scale by Tania. And in this video, we're going to be doing, uh, getting everything ready for painting. We're going to get ready for painting. We're going to paint it. We're going to put our decals on and we're also going to do uh, some panel liner, which is kind of an important step. So uh, let's just go ahead and get to it. So every painting session begins with disassembly and <laughs> you know your preparation is going to determine how well of a paint job and uh, and how easy it's going to be for you to do. So I've removed those fuel tanks as well as the turret uh, which uh, those fuel tanks weren't glued on and we're going to go ahead and take those tow cables off as well. And we'll also separate the upper hull from the lower hull. Now this is a really good tight fit. Uh, you can choose to glue this on later if you want to, but for ease of access for our track assemblies uh, and also removing our road wheels, uh, it's just easier to take that off. That way we don't knock anything off our, our upper hull. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that one pin uh, that is facing on the outboard side of our tracks. And we don't want to lose those, so it's a good idea to have a little cup or something to put those in. And then we can go ahead and remove our tracks. Now with the tracks removed, we can go ahead and remove our road wheel assemblies. And I will say that those uh, poly caps really hold that uh, on. And then, of course, we're going to use a cup and uh, collect all of our uh, little poly caps there because those are going to have to be painted as well and we don't want to lose any of them because there aren't any spares <laughs> so <laughs> be careful about that and you don't want that to go flying off across the um, your hobby area also we have our idlers to pull off and they too have a poly cap now those poly caps are slightly let's see we just dropped one there we go uh, they are slightly shorter, and they've got more bolt patterns or more bolts in the in the cap end of it. So you can tell those two uh, from all the others. And then, of course, there's a poly cap inside our uh, drive wheels. So we don't have to worry about losing that. So we'll go ahead and roll up uh, our metal tracks here. And we're not going to be working with those quite yet so we just need to roll them up get them out of the way uh, and set them aside for now now I'm going to use some alligator clips here uh, for our fuel tanks and we can just clip them onto that little tab that locating tab that uh, allows us to put it onto the hull of the vehicle and that way we have uh, uh, an easier time here we can be able to paint these and do whatever we need to to them without having to actually touch the part. And we're going to do the same thing with our tow cables. And when it comes to our wheels, I have all these little pieces of dowel here, uh, which I have sharpened with a pencil sharpener. And that way it has a tapered end to it. And we can use that to hold uh, all of our wheels. That'd be the idlers, the uh, road wheel assemblies, and as well as our drive wheel. Um, I think that's the idler. But anyway, I got it backwards there. Uh, I just want to make sure that the outside of it is facing where I can get a good paint job on it. And it helps to organize it. If you have a piece of styrofoam, uh, which is easily to come by, uh, we can just go ahead and place all of our road wheels and idlers and stuff on that to hold them for us, keep them organized. So we do have some metal, and I'm going to use this Mr. Metal Primer here. Uh, for all of our photo etch, uh, we'll put a coat of that on and it dries really quick. And this is an etching type primer, which really helps uh, for the adhesion of our primer paint that we'll be putting on. And we're going to go ahead and do those metal grab handles as well. Even though we sanded them, uh, we're going to go ahead and prime it. Just give us a better opportunity here for paint to stick. and. Uh, we don't want any of that um, paint chipping off on us. And we'll do the grills as well. 
Now with everything prepped for painting, we're going to go ahead and use this surface primer by Vallejo. Now this is German Panzer Gray. And we're going to paint everything except for those metal tracks. Don't paint the metal tracks. We're going to do something else with those later. So we're going to do some pre-shading. And for that, we're going to use this Anita's acrylic uh, craft paint, uh, which is a water-based acrylic. And uh, uh, this is the white and so we're just going to use that mixed up of course for the airbrush and what we're going to do is kind of a center fill method here uh, aircraft guys you probably are familiar with that uh, if you've never done pre-shading before what this does is it gives us a nice color modulation uh, a lot more interest uh, in our paint job and I like to do the pre-shading <laughs> because it's easier to fix if I screw that up, <laughs> which sometimes I do. Now on these panels, especially here on the back, you can see uh, I'm just getting uh, a little close to the edge and just doing the center of uh, that uh, access hatch. And we're just going to do around the back of it. Um, when it comes to the mixture here with that Anita paint uh, that we're using, we are going to mix that to a uh, about a 60-40. It's 60% 60 paint and 40% uh, Vallejo acrylic thinner that I'm using. And we'll just continue to do our center fill method here on the, uh, uh, the upper portion of the hull. Uh, lower portion of the hull we're not going to worry about because it'll all be in shadow and uh, it's really not necessary it's in in real life it would be in shade anyway so leaving it dark will be just fine so when it comes to our turret i'm going to use a slightly different approach um, here on the hatches and those armored covers for the evacuation fans uh, we'll do center fill but when it comes to the rest of the turret i am going to actually highlight the uh, uh, the large edges uh, around the turret um, except for the mantlet there of course and that small uh, weather shield but as you can see here we're going to do just the top edge here of the turret we'll also do the corners and we're also going to concentrate on that nice bulge right there uh, on the side of the turret and we'll take and uh, highlight those two with our pre-shading and then a little bit of center fill here in the uh, top of the turret give us some nice color modulation once we lay down uh, our Russian green and then we're gonna do also the top portion of the barrel as well and that should look pretty good now we don't want to forget those poly caps um, so I am going to uh, just do some center fill there on the caps which will be the uh, portion that is sticking out the furthest <laughs> on our road wheels and then we have also the top portions of our fuel tanks so we'll do a little bit of pre-shading there and that'll give us a little bit more interest there yeah I think this is gonna look really good so when it comes to our top coat color we're gonna be using this Russian green 4BO uh, by Vallejo. Of course, I've mixed it for my airbrush and we're just going to be laying it on in uh, real thin coats and that'll give us the opportunity to uh, allow our pre-shading to develop that color modulation that we're actually looking for. Uh, I think Vallejo really nailed this color because that Russian green is a peculiar green <laughs> it's not like you know olive drab or just olive green or the green that the French were using during the war uh, it's very it's got a very unique uh, shade of green to it as you can see here we're just going to go over all of our pre-shading and we're just going to do it in multiple passes uh, we don't want to saturate uh, the model with too much of this top coat color because if we do we can obliterate that pre-shading and we don't want to do that we did all that work with our pre-shading we kind of want that color modulation to show through so the key to laying this paint on is that once you get to the point where you think it may need just one more coat 
uh, you probably you probably should stop. Uh, I have the bad habit of sometimes uh, laying down too much paint, and we want that uh, appreciating to show through. Now, of course, we don't want to forget about all of our other parts, like the lower hull, uh, also the fuel tanks and the cable ends, and the turret, of course, and our road wheels and idlers. Uh, we're going to paint all that in this uh, uh, Russian Green 4BO. Now with our paint dry, we'll just go ahead and take a quick look here. And you can see how that pre-shading has come through the paint, providing us that color modulation. And I really like the looks of that. So next up, we're going to do some chipping. And I'm going to go back to the German Panzer Gray for this. And we're going to use a sponge. Now this is sponge chipping. Now I'm just pulling off little bits and pieces of this sponge here. I want a ragged, uh, ununiform, <laughs> is that the word I'm looking for? An ununiform edge there uh, for our sponging. I, I don't want it to be a predictable, uh, like, like a paintbrush would be. So I'm just going to kind of pull off little pieces of it. And then we'll go ahead and affix that little sponge here in one of my self-gripping uh, tweezers. I almost forgot what it was called. Now when it comes to being prepared for our uh, sponge chipping, I got a Q-tip, some water standing by, and that's for mistakes. And then we have a paper towel for blotting because uh, we have to unload that sponge. So for our chipping, I'm going to load the paint into the sponge and this is one of those synthetic sponges and we're going to unload most of that paint because we're not painting the vehicle we're just doing some real light chipping and one of the areas where you can practice this and see if the uh, uh, sponge is loaded correctly for you and not too saturated with paint is just put it on the lower hull and see what you come out with now when it comes to chipping the smaller the chip the better you can never have too small of a chip and that's kind of the key, uh, well, one of the keys to uh, sponge chipping. Uh, also, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that when it comes to chips on a vehicle, uh, it didn't get all those chips at one time. So when we go to put our sponge chipping on, what we need to do is uh, make several passes. So we just want to put our chips on areas that are going to catch the most uh, at first here um, on the edges of things and you can see how that uh, German Panzer Gray is starting to develop those little chips for us uh, and like I was saying uh, you're gonna make more passes over areas where uh, you want more chips and then in the event that you do uh, get <laughs> uh, say a little spot where you don't like uh, the chip it's too big uh, a dampened q-tip here or earbud or cotton bud whichever you prefer to call it you can just wipe that away but you do have to do that relatively quickly because the paint will set up and then you want to be able to get that off and you can see here how overlapping our really small chips develops much better and realistic looking larger chips and uh, better wear marks as well and so that's kind of the uh, the effect that we're going for here and I think it's looking pretty good so next we're going to use a fine paintbrush here nice and pointed and I am going to load uh, a little bit of water kind of dampen those bristles a little bit I find that that helps uh, with the transfer of the paint and uh, we're going to use that same uh, German Panzer Gray here. And we're just going to kind of unify some of the higher edges here uh, just to give a little bit more definition uh, to some of those parts like around the corners of the hatch. And um, this gives us a lot more control using the brush. Uh, now while we're doing this, uh, these acrylic paints will start to dry on our brush a little bit. and. It paint gets a little clumpy <laughs> so we're going to want to clean our brush often uh, in order to keep it 
uh, nice and thin and and uh, the paint transfer uh, working the way we want it to in a predictable manner we're also going to put in some scratches uh, of course here at the driver's hatch on the t34 that's where the driver would scoot up the uh, front slope of the armor plate there getting into his uh, in, in through his hatch and we're going to put small scratches wherever it is that uh, we need either a little bit more visual interest or in areas where uh, most likely there would be scratches on the paint. I'm also using the same color here as our foundation color for the head of the shovel there uh, on, on the spade, the metal portion. Um, and we're just going to lay that down a nice smooth coat with the paintbrush. Now we're going to go to a little bit of uh, Vallejo Black, and I'm going to use that uh, for our machine gun barrel. That's a really small barrel, so we don't have much to paint there, but we do want it just a little bit darker than the rest of the details on the, on the tank. So next up, we're going to use this German Dark Yellow. Uh, I know, German colors on a Russian tank. That's got to be some sort of heresy there. <laughs> but uh, this is a good foundation I found for uh, the wooden handle uh, on our shovel or any other wooden handle tools uh, if you'd like to have it wood grained. So this is the foundation color that we're going to put on the handle. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. So next up we have our uh, original mixture of the uh, German Panzer Gray for uh, our, our uh, primer coat, if I can get my mind together here. Uh, since it is mixed really thin for the airbrush, it flows really well. And so we're gonna use that to uh, cover in over the, uh, the rubber tires. And that's the areas where we had some overspray from where we painted the uh, metal portions, <laughs> the metal portions of our road wheels. And this goes down really fast and really easy. By the time we get done uh, painting all of them, I think we have 10 sets to do, uh, we can go ahead and put a second coat on that if needed. Also, I, I, I think that this uh, darker gray here does a much better job of uh, simulating old rubber than, say, blackwood. So now we're going to use uh, XF56 metallic gray. And we're going to use that on these uh, polished areas. Uh, so these would be metal polished areas where the tracks are going to be running on our drive wheels. And I call them drive wheels instead of sprockets because there's no sprocket. It, it actually drives off of pins uh, that are inside the wheel there. That engages those center horns that's on our track. But the wheels itself, um, there's not going to be any paint on these areas. So this metallic gray will give us that nice uh, metal metallic look. And we're going to do that also on our idlers. Uh, we'll paint those up the, the exact same way. So now we're going to use this artist oil paint here. This is burnt umber. And you can get these from, you know, your hobby shop, craft, craft shops. Um, I'm putting this oil paint on a paper towel first case there's a lot of linseed oil uh, in the paint and then we're going to transfer it um, just to a piece of cardboard so that it can soak away uh, as much of that linseed oil as possible while we continue on painting. So this is a preparatory step for using it later. We need to look at our exhaust and I'm going to use this metal uh, model masters rust. <laughs> I'm having a hard, try, hard time talking today, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, anyway, we're going to use this as a base coat for rust on our exhaust tips here. And there's not very much there to paint, so this goes pretty quick. We just want to make sure that we don't get any of it on our uh, Russian green there. We just need to be very careful with it. So now we're going to move to this flat steel testers enamel. And I'm going to use that uh, for our headlight assembly. I don't really want it uh, to stand out too much. I want it to kind of blend in with the rest of the vehicle. 
so that's the reason why I'm using uh, flat steel for this uh, you can use whatever color you like uh, of course if you use something like chrome uh, it will be very very bright and shiny <laughs> And we're also going to come in and just edge out uh, portions on our shovel head. Now these are going to uh, be the uh, wear areas where the shovel has been used and any finish that was on it has been rubbed uh, and polished away down to the metal surface. So now we need to do a little bit of blending on that shovel head and I'm just going to use uh, uh, enamel thinner of course since this is an enamel based paint. And we're going to just start blending that and removing any excess paint uh, of that flat steel. Uh, anything that looks eh, kind of unnatural. And we just want to blend those edges a little bit into the rest of the color. Uh, that uh, gray, that dark gray that we have on the shovel head. And we can remove as much of that flat steel color as we want. Uh, just kind of keeping it thicker on the edges there where it would be shinier and just blending it overall. So next up we're ready for that artist oil paint. Now I've had it on the cardboard here just for a couple of hours but I'm going to use this uh, testers um, thinner so that's a, an enamel thinner to kind of reactivate the pigments here and I'm, I need a nice smooth uh, uh, pigment paint to use over top of that uh, German yellow there, that German dark yellow. And that's not quite enough pigment there. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get just a little bit more mixed up. And I like using the cardboard here because I can use it as a paint palette. And then when we're done, we can just simply throw it away. Now you can go back to this uh, oil paint. Uh, as I've gone back as much as three days uh, and, and still use those pigments. So uh, it does last quite a while. And it doesn't take very much, especially on this kit, because we only have uh, one little uh, wooden shovel handle to do. And if we need to, we can use a clean brush and some enamel thinner and just lightly drag the bristles across this pigment uh, to, to create our wood graining but I think we're getting a pretty good uh, a good look here so I probably won't have to do that on this one I think it looks pretty good now once everything is completely dry we're going to use this uh, Tamiya X22 thinned of course for the X20A thinner for our airbrush and we're going to give everything a good coat in preparation for our decals and these are the ones that I've chosen uh, this is also the ones that's on the box art so I think that looks the best I mean we could choose any one we want so it's time to put on our decals so we have a q-tip we have water we have scissors of course a piece of paper towel some tweezers and uh, also I do have the micro saw and the micro set to help with settling our decals. And then next up is the uh, brushes, of course, to apply the micro saw and the micro set. And then, of course, uh, we have to have our decals. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and separate the decals that we're going to be using. And we just need to cut that uh, decal paper and separate those decals and one of the things that you want to pay attention to is that there are these little numbers that identify those decals and we want to trim those away and we don't want that being transferred to the model uh, when we get ready to slide these decals on so these are the water slide type decals and we're going to be doing them one at a time so we'll just isolate the uh, decal that we're going to be using so I like to use these uh, self-gripping tweezers and what we can do is we can just affix the decal that we're going to be working with and that will hold it uh, nice and firmly for us. That way we don't lose our decal down inside the water and have to fish that out later. And I'm just going to use the second pair to suspend it in the water 
and now we can go ahead and start working with the uh, the actual vehicle so since these decals are going on the turret I decided the best way to do it is just to slide our um, turret back onto the upper hull and that'll hold it for us and we don't have to chase that around the workbench now I am going to use some micro set here uh, just to help adhesion uh, one of the things is that we have a lot of texturing uh, on the sides of the turret uh, most of which is uh, provided by Tamiya right out of the box a little bit of it we did ourselves but we want to make sure that the decal is uh, uh, well attached to that painted surface and of course this uh, gloss clear surface is going to help us with the positioning of our decals and as you can see here I am having a little bit of trouble with it but that's kind of what you have <laughs> you know uh, sometimes you have to pull a decal back up if you can get it back off I've had those problems too but here everything seems to be working very fine and nice and once we get it positioned we're going to use our q-tip here again and we're just going to press it down a little bit into those details and roll the moisture out from underneath it and that'll help the decal to settle into place for our numbers we're going to do the exact same thing uh, which is just you know kind of wash rinse repeat it's all the same thing uh, you just make sure that that decal does move off that paper before you try to slide it off and we want to get it as close to the actual location as possible uh, that way we don't have any <laughs> decal mishaps and we'll just slide that off now you can refloat these decals uh, if they do stick to the paint usually um, sometimes they don't want to move and you may have to just actually pick it up up off the surface and we're just gonna squeeze out the water so we're gonna use the micro saw just on top of the decal itself and that's to help it uh, settle into all that texturing uh, we want to try to avoid any silvering and that's where there is a uh, little bit of trapped air or where the decal did not adhere to the surface so this will actually help that decal soften that decal up and then we can uh, after just a few minutes we can just roll it back down and smooth that decal out and it should conform nicely to the surface which these decals do these decals are not as thick as the old Tamiya decals so it actually looks really good as you can see here that's that's pretty nice I, I really like putting decals on because that says mm, we're making progress <laughs> so we're gonna once these decals dry we are gonna go ahead and use the X22 back over top of them to seal them in now it's time for some panel liner now this is to me is black uh, panel liner and I'm gonna use this really fine pointed long bristle brush here uh, to apply our panel liner and I hope that you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing here <laughs> it's a little hard to see on that high gloss surface it's hard for me to see it so I know on the camera it might be even more difficult uh, but the uh, gloss clear coat will actually help that panel liner flow uh, right along the edges uh, where we want that panel liner to go and this panel liner is going to help accentuate and um, make more definition uh, on the, all these little details that are on the model itself and so one of the problems that we face uh, in scale modeling is that real small details uh, tend to get lost in the color of the vehicle and so this panel liner is going to help bring those back out for us so that they will be readily visible so we're going to use it also on all of our weld seams uh, to help bring out those details and if you remember we added uh, those cut marks on the armor plate and so we're going to want that uh, to kind of 
that those details to come out as well and you can see here the bolts as well now when it comes to cleanup since this is an enamel based product we just use a clean brush with a little bit of enamel thinner on it and it will just erase um, any panel liner that we don't want on there so I do suggest that you go over uh, the vehicle several times and make sure that you've removed as much of that panel liner that you don't want um, that you can uh, <laughs> especially before we do a top coat uh, because once we paint over top this panel liner it's there forever so we just want to make sure that we uh, go over it several times and address all those little areas so here we are this is where we're at in this stage of the build uh, a note about that pre-shading that we've done uh, I like to do that pre-shading because if I make a mistake I, it's easy to fix we can just go back in with our dark primer color and fix that and then um, uh, it also allows us to be able to develop our color over top of that whereas post shading not so much if you make a mistake you've, you've got a problem there and that will do it for part five. So next up will be part six. And we're going to wrap this whole thing up in the next video. So I'm not sure how long that video is going to be because we still have a lot of things to do here. And But uh, it's going to be a very interesting video. You're, you're not going to want to miss that part for sure. Uh, special thanks to all of my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep making these little videos. And I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you did, uh, give me that like. I'd appreciate that. If you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, uh, go ahead and subscribe. It's free. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss the next part. Uh, also, leave me a comment. Uh, I love to hear from you guys. And I like to hear uh, what you think of the build so far. So, until next time, guys, you stay safe.